Hey there, fellow time travelers of entertainment. Remember those golden days when black and white pixels ruled the screen, and the magic of cinema was captured in reels of film? Ah, nostalgia, the sweet elixir that transports us to a bygone era of simpler joys and flickering projectors. Now, let's rewind the clock a bit. Ever find yourself sinking into the couch, eyes glued to the screen, as the enchanting tale of Darby O'Gill and the little people unfolded before you? That 1959 movie, a gem from the cinematic treasure trove brought a world of whimsy and wonder right into our living rooms. Do you recall the thrill of those moments, the characters that danced through your imagination, and the delightful escapades that kept you hooked? Here's a chance to take a stroll down memory lane. Have you ever watched Darby O'Gill and the Little People? And if so, what are your fondest memories? Share the magic. I'd love to hear about your favorite scenes, the characters that stole your heart, and any quirky experiences tied to this cinematic masterpiece. Now, let's delve into some fascinating tidbits about the show. Did you know that the film was a pioneering work in special effects for its time? The way they brought those mischievous leprechauns to life was nothing short of groundbreaking. And the music, the enchanting soundtrack that whisked us away to the mystical realms of Irish folklore. As we uncover these nuggets of trivia, let your memories intertwine with the rich tapestry of Darby O'Gill and the little people. And who knows, perhaps y'all discover something new about this classic that adds a fresh layer to your appreciation. So, dear friends, kick back, grab some popcorn, and let's embark on a journey through time and cinematic brilliance. Share your tales and let the magic of storytelling weave its spell once more. In 1959, the release of Darby O'Gill and the Little People brought forth a curious blend of Irish folklore and cinematic charm. Amid the film's debut, a version of the song My Pretty Irish Girl found its way into the limelight, sung by none other than Sir Sean Connery and Janet Munro. The timing of its release coincided with the movie's premiere. Ironically, Connery, in a candid admission, revealed that the singing aspect was the one facet of his role that failed to win his favor. The plot, weaving through enchanting Irish landscapes, takes an unexpected turn when Darby, the protagonist, is lured to a mountaintop well not by his horse, but by a mythical creature known as a puka. This fantastical beast, capable of assuming various animal forms, adds an intriguing layer to the narrative. When Darby discovers that Katie, another character, is chasing what she believes to be a horse, he recognizes it as the same puka. In Irish folklore, pukas can be either friend or foe. Notably, the most famous friendly puka made its mark in the 1950 film Harvey. Adding poetic resonance to the film, the lines uttered by characters Katie and Michael, the hills of old Ireland, how wondrously they stand, are drawn from the verses of Denny's Florence McCarthy's poem, The Pillar Towers of Ireland. This infusion of literature serves to enrich the cultural tapestry of Darby O'Gill and the little people. In the year 1959, the silver screen witnessed the magical interplay of myth, music, and poetry in the cinematic gem. As we look back, the film stands as a testament to the timeless allure of Irish folklore and its seamless integration into the world of cinema. Unmasking the melodic deception in Darby O'Gill and the Little People in the 1959 cinematic gem, Darby O'Gill and the Little People, Albert Sharp, who portrayed the titular character, showcased his acting prowess. However, when it came to playing the violin in the movie, Sharp faced a challenge and didn't know how to play the instrument. To maintain the illusion, two professional musicians were brought in. One deftly handled the bowing, while the other expertly navigated the fingerboard. Meanwhile, Sharp, a master of his craft, kept his hands gracefully out of sight, seamlessly syncing with the music. This behind-the-scenes orchestration allowed the character of Darby to mesmerize audiences with his musical talents, all while concealing Sharp's lack of violin expertise. This revelation sheds light on the meticulous craftsmanship behind the scenes, where the magic of cinema seamlessly blends with the art of performance. The synergy of Sharp's acting and the musician's musical finesse created an illusion so convincing that viewers were transported to the enchanting world of Irish folklore without a second thought. While the movie delves into the mystical realm of banshees, it is interesting to note a subtle detail that might escape the casual observer. In Irish legend, the banshee is often described as combing her hair as she approaches. In Darby O'Gill and the Little People, the chroma key technique, while making it challenging to discern intricate details, reveals that the banshee who comes to Darby is indeed depicted combing her hair. 
This nuanced inclusion aligns with the rich tapestry of Irish folklore interwoven into the fabric of the film. Additionally, the leprechaun effects in the movie, which might appear sophisticated and high-tech, were ingeniously achieved using a technique known as forced perspective. The seemingly diminutive leprechauns were brought to life by placing the normal-sized actors closer to the camera than their tiny counterparts. This clever alignment on the same horizontal plane through the lens effectively eliminated any noticeable difference in distance between them. The result was a seamless integration of the magical and mundane, captivating audiences with the illusion of size and perspective. In conclusion, Darby O'Gill and the Little People stands as a testament to the ingenuity of filmmakers in the late 1950s. The film not only enchants with its storytelling but also unveils the artistry involved in concealing cinematic tricks. From Sharp's violin performance to the subtle details of Banshee lore and the clever use of forced perspective, the movie continues to capture the imagination of audiences with its timeless magic. In the original 1959 release of Darby O'Gill and the Little People, the Irish characters occasionally spoke in Munster Irish, adding an authentic touch to the film. Darby himself counted off in Irish Aeon DTR, Seedire before playing the fox chase, while King Brian rallied the hunt with a cry of our Aghaidlin. However, in a later version, most of these lines were redubbed in English, altering the linguistic flavor of the film. Apart from linguistic nuances, the film faced a literal power struggle during production. The innovative lighting techniques used to maintain proper perspective for actors drained so much electricity that it reportedly blew out a substation in Burbank when the lights were unexpectedly switched on. This technical hiccup sheds light on the challenges faced behind the scenes to achieve the film's visual magic. Walt Disney's vision for Darby O'Gill and the Little People took root in the 1940s. Post-World War II, Disney dispatched artists to Ireland to gather background material, underscoring the commitment to authenticity in bringing this whimsical tale to life. The movie stands as a testament to Disney's meticulous planning and dedication to capturing the essence of Irish folklore. In conclusion, Darby O'Gill and the Little People not only weaves a charming narrative on screen but also bears witness to linguistic choices, technical challenges, and the extensive groundwork undertaken to transport audiences to the enchanting world of Irish folklore. From language nuances to power outages, the film's journey from concept to screen is a fascinating tale in itself. As we bid adieu to the enchanting realms of Darby O'Gill and the Little People, let the echoes of its magic linger in the recesses of your memories. This 1959 cinematic gem has woven tales of whimsy, mischief, and wonder, inviting you to embark on a journey where folklore dances with reality. Now, as the credits roll and the curtains fall, I invite you to delve into the chambers of your own experiences with this timeless classic. What moments stirred your soul? Which scenes painted the canvas of your imagination with hues of nostalgia? Reflect on the characters who etched themselves into the tapestry of your heart. Our shared connection with this cinematic masterpiece is a testament to the enduring power of storytelling. Whether you're a first-time viewer or a seasoned aficionado, your perspective adds another layer to the rich tapestry of Darby O'Gill and the little people. In the comments below, share your cherished memories, the scenes that made you laugh, the ones that tugged at your heartstrings, and the characters you wished could step out from the screen into your own world. Let this space become a haven for the exchange of thoughts, reflections, and the celebration of a film that has left an indelible mark on our hearts. Thank you for joining us on this whimsical journey down memory lane. Your thoughts and memories are the threads that weave the fabric of our shared love for storytelling. Until our paths cross again in the realms of imagination, keep the magic alive in your hearts. And with that, we bid you farewell until the next adventure unfolds.